Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling joy from the ashes a new life is born Jesus is calling oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide, forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Good afternoon. Welcome to church. Thank you so much for joining with us. It's really lovely to have you. It's wonderful to still be able to meet together. Uh, I'm Tegan. If you haven't met me before, I'm a member of Southern Beaches Anglican. And this is Jamie. We'll be hearing from Jamie later today, uh, hearing about his sermon. Going to have a good chat about that. And uh, I actually just wanted to start by sharing that I was really encouraged this week to read the Bible with some people in our 3G. We actually looked at 1 Peter chapter 1 and I thought I might read a couple of verses because I found them so encouraging. Uh, So 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy he has given us new birth into living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil or fade, kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power 
until the coming of salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. Friends, we have a living hope because of Jesus and we have an inheritance that can't be spoiled. And this was a great reminder for me as I think about everything that's going on, just knowing that my hope is in Jesus and my joy comes from Jesus too, that's not from my circumstances. And so what a great reminder as we begin worshipping God together today uh, that Jesus is our solid rock and he is so dependable. We have so much hope because of that. And so uh, let me pray and then we're going to join together and sing to our great God. Lord Jesus, we just thank you that you are our living hope, uh, that we can have joy through you. And God, we pray that you would settle our hearts before you as we come to worship today. Uh, would you be glorified in all of our lives? We pray this in your name. Amen. Amen. Let's sing together.
Hi everyone, my name's Joel and I'm here with Tegan and Tegan, could you explain a bit more why we're here and what's in your hand? Well, it's time for our kids talk, of course, Joel. And what do I have in my heart? I have a heart in my hand, is what <laughs> I was trying to say. Uh, why do I have a heart in my hand? Well, we were thinking about the story uh, from the Bible that we're learning about today and we realised uh, just how we're called to love God with all of our hearts. And so I have created a lovely red heart. I was wondering, maybe you can hold maybe that. Maybe I could me. hold that. So this heart is God's heart? Yeah. It's a nice big heart, just like how God has a big heart, right? Yeah. Yeah. I was wondering, Tegan, if God has a big heart like this that's all perfect, what are our hearts like? So last week, if you were with us, well, actually it wasn't with us, if you were with silly Billy Gilly and Professor Gilly, you would have remembered that Jesus heals us from our sin. So whilst Jesus has a perfect heart, we don't actually. We have hearts that are full of sin, a little bit like this. I have lots of them. So they're not clean, actually. And, and they're not clean. Why are they not clean? They're clean because... Not clean or clean? They're not, they're not clean because sin stains us and it separates us from God. Hmm. Uh, and that is a real problem, actually. But... As we learned last week, Jesus heals us from our sin and we wanted to demonstrate that for you today. Uh, so if we have this lovely heart, which is the heart of Jesus for us, he came down from heaven to live as a man. He lived a perfect life, uh, but there was something amazing that he came to do. Uh, do you want to explain what that is whilst I... Yeah, sure, Tegan. Well, the amazing thing that God came down to do was he became a person. He became a man who we know under the name Jesus. And he came and he lived a perfect life. And he loved God and he loved others. And then it turned out that actually lots of people didn't like that. You'd think that that would be a good thing about someone. But actually, people hated him for it. People hated him so bad that they actually killed him for it. And so he died on a cross, a really bad and t really terrible way to die. He died, and when he died, he actually took on all of our rotten and sinful hearts, all our black hearts. He, he took them all on, and he actually became sin for us, even though he'd known no sin before in his whole life. And this must have been devastating. I mean, we spoke about how our heart, like this sin separates us from God. And so for Jesus himself to take this sin, this blackness and darkness on himself must have meant horrible, horrible pain. Yeah, we, I remember learning not that long ago, Tegan, that there's a point where Jesus actually says on the cross, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And it was at that moment that he was actually disconnected from God for the first time ever when he took on all our sin. But we know, Tegan, that this isn't actually the end of the story. What, do you want to explain what happened when Jesus died? So, Jesus died, he was buried, uh, and people must have thought that was the end, actually. But we know that that is not the end because three days later, Jesus rose from the dead. And he rose completely victorious because, you see, Jesus did take all of that sin onto himself and he dealt with it. He defeated death. He defeated sin. And so he... I'm a bit slow, sorry. <laughs> He raised again to new life. He defeated sin. He healed us from our sin. Uh, and that is just the most incredible truth. In fact, how, how do we even respond to that kind of amazing sacrifice and love that he showed by taking our own sin and healing us of it? All we can do is 
we can't we can't pay him back for it. No. So all we can do is is follow him and love him, praise him for what he's done, and and tell others about this incredible good news that he's given us. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? It is amazing. It is amazing. He calls us to love him with our whole hearts. Yeah. He calls us to love God with all our heart, soul, mind and strength and to love everybody else as ourself. We're now going to sing a song that actually talks about these very things. It's one of our favourites, so we hope that you will enjoy it. We want to hear you singing all the way from here. Great. Thanks, Joel. We're now going to do our kids' song. This song is called The Love Round, which talks about the two commandments that our Lord gave us. Love God and love others. See if you can join in with us. One, a two, a one, two, three. love that kid song and I love those actions and I saw some fantastic actions in the back then Jamie did yeah, you did that, you see that that, 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 was, that me. was that you. was me doing all the awesome actions did you notice that was great you should re-watch that a few times because you don't see it very often <laughs> all right it's now time for us to hear from God's word yeah. uh, so if you grab your Bibles and we'll welcome Judith to the stage she's going to read from Luke chapter 7 for us Hi, my name is Judith, and I'm going to read from Luke 7, verses 36 till 50. When one of the Pharisees invited Jesus to have dinner with him, he went to the Pharisee's house and reclined at the table. A woman in that town who lived a sinful life learned that Jesus was eating at the Pharisee's house. So she came there with an alabaster jar of perfume. As she stood behind him at his feet weeping, she began to wet his feet with her tears. Then she wiped them with her hair, kissed them, and poured perfume on them. When the Pharisee who had invited him saw this, he said to himself, If this man were a prophet, he would know who is touching him and what kind of woman she is, that she is a sinner. Jesus answered him, Simon, I have something to tell you. Tell me, teacher, he said. Two people owed money to a certain moneylender. One owed him 500 denarii and the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now which of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned toward the woman and said to Simon, 
Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet, but she wept my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, who is this who even forgives sins? Jesus said to the woman, your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Hear the word of the Lord. What a great passage that you get to unpack for us yeah. today, Jamie. It's really exciting. I, I really love this passage. I think it's a really powerful piece of scripture and teaches us so much about what it means to follow Jesus. Can you tell us a little bit about it? Sure, sure. Well, I, I think one of the things about this text is, is it, it kind of builds on what Joel said last week, you know, no matter who you are, Jesus loves you. And, and I think we can just add to that this week and say, no matter who you are, Jesus loves you and he's calling you to follow him. Uh, and so today's text, in, in fact, all of chapter seven here is about faith, about what it means to answer the call to follow Jesus. And so I think we learn a lot about faith throughout this chapter. Um, it's, I think it's one of the go-to chapters to look at what it means to follow Jesus. So uh, yeah, it's a great text. and. Uh, I think there's two key things we see uh, because I think you, you might uh, look at this and go, well, Jesus is seeking, he's calling me, I'm feeling it, but how do I respond? What do I do? And I think uh, today's text tells us there's two ways that Jesus wants us to respond. Uh, and those two ways are that Jesus wants us to respond with faith, uh, and firstly, and secondly, I think uh, Jesus is calling us to respond with all of our heart. Uh, he wants us to lay everything down and give our heart to him uh, in, with all we have. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so I wonder if uh, you could tell us a little bit about why you think that Jesus tells uh, this random story in yeah. verse 41 and 42. Yeah. yeah, it's really interesting, isn't it? It's in, the, the whole text is really interesting and I think you've got two characters, right, happening here. You've got Simon, who's who's a, a religious leader, a tax, uh, well, not a tax collector, he's a religious leader of Pharisees, mm -hmm. uh, and he's hosting a dinner. He's invited Jesus around, and, and I think that's important to know because uh, that's a big deal. It's probably not so much for us now, but in those days, in that culture, if you invited someone for dinner, that was saying, uh, I want to have a relationship with you. So Simon knew Jesus was special, um, they're having this meal uh, and a woman hears about it. Now, the, the text describes this woman uh, as a, a woman who lived in the city. Um, a more literal translation would be a woman of the city. And most scholars agree that that literally means uh, she's a professional prostitute. Uh, mm. That's who this woman is. She hears about it. She comes. And, and the text tells us that she comes with an alabaster jar around, uh, around her neck. So all this is happening uh, in, at this feast and Jesus is laying down now. And this woman comes and she, uh, she, she weeps tears on Jesus' feet. And that's the first time he notices her, is these tears falling on his feet. Uh, she gets down and, and she wipes his feet with her hair. Uh, and, and she pours perfume on his feet and, and wipes with her hair. And, this is a really intimate moment. Mm. But also, it's good to know that this is scandalous. Mm. Like, for, for that culture, in any culture, this is really extraordinary. Um, and and, and uh, most people would have looked at it and thought, what on earth is going on here? Mm. Um, it, the people in that, in that room would have really noticed what was going on. But what she's doing is responding to Jesus with great faith. Mm. Um, she's, she's showing faith in Jesus. She's putting uh, everything uh, that she has into Jesus. Now, uh, one of the important things to notice, and I, I had to research this, I didn't know, but an alabaster jar is a jar that holds perfume. And it's kind of got a really tiny opening at the top. It's meant to let the smell out, but not 
the perfume inside. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, historians say generally um, for a, a prostitute to have something like this, which was really expensive, would have meant that this was so important to her. This mm -hmm. would have set her apart from every other woman. This would have made her highly attractive, highly desirable. Um, and some scholars would even say that this was uh, her very essence of life. And so uh, we could say that the, the, in some ways her identity is wrapped up in this alabaster jar. Mm. Um, but the text tells us that she pours it on Jesus' feet. Now, now from the research I looked at, um, that, that's not possible unless you break the bottle, unless you smash the bottle uh, and let all the contents out, let everything out. Uh, so the picture here is this woman saying, um, I've had all my hopes and dreams. My life has been wrapped up in being attractive and being desirable. Um, and today, Jesus, uh, I, I no longer let that be the ruler of my life. Mm. Uh, today, I make you Lord of my life and I lay all that down. And Jesus, you are my Lord. You are my everything and you are where I find my identity. Mm. Uh, that's a massive moment. Um, and, and I think it reminds us that um, and similarly, we can be like that. You know, there's, there's things in our life that we love far more than Jesus. Uh, and, and, and Jesus, when he's calling us, he wants us to respond by laying it all down. Um, you know, if our life is tied up in our identity, in our, in our career, in our relationships, uh, in money, in houses, in cars, uh, even, dare I say it, in musical instruments, um, then we're going to find ourselves heading down a dangerous path. And Jesus is saying, lay it all down. Enjoy those things in their place, but put me on top. Mm. I'm the most important part of your life. Mm. Uh, and so Jesus wants us to respond with faith in him. Mm. And that's the big point that's going on here. Mm -hmm, definitely. As you say that, Jamie, it reminds me of the idea that where uh, our heart is, that's or where our treasure is, that's where our heart is. Absolutely. And I think the fact that, as you say, this woman doesn't even uh, worry about what people are thinking of her. No. The way she's acting shows completely that her heart is fully for Jesus. Absolutely. That's what's going on here, and I think that's a really important thing to pick up, Teagues. And so what do we learn about God from this passage from God? Yeah, look, I, th I think one of the most important things that we learn is uh, uh, God wants us to come to him with our whole heart. Um, and I think, y you know, it's, it's interesting. I think, um, and, and, and I just realised this as I was writing this sermon, we've got, we've got to remember who Jesus is talking to. Like, he's in the house of Simon, who's a Pharisee. Uh, he knows Simon is interested in him, but he also knows that Simon isn't giving his heart away to Jesus. Uh, and so um, Jesus is teaching Simon a lesson, and he literally says that here. He says, uh, Simon, I want to tell you something. Uh, and and what, he's, what he's getting at, what he's getting at here down in uh, verse 40 is, Simon, I want to teach you a lesson. Mm. You know, I, I, today, Simon, I want you to know what it really means to follow me. It doesn't mean turning up to church on Sunday every now and then. It doesn't mean reading your Bible four times a week. It doesn't mean, um, you know, praying and uh, four days or uh, four times a day. It doesn't mean all those things, Simon. What it means is giving your heart to me. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is about to teach Simon a big lesson. Mm -hmm. And I think he's also teaching us a big lesson here as well. Um, because it's a lesson uh, for Simon. And like I said, it's a lesson for us. It, it, it's a difficult one, I think, to accept. But you'll see it throughout the Bible. So Jesus turns to Simon in verse 44 and says, You see this woman, Simon? You didn't give me water for my feet. She wet my feet with her tears. You didn't give me a kiss. Yet this woman from the time I entered has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't put oil on my head, but she has poured her most expensive perfume mm. on my feet. Jesus is saying, Simon, why haven't you been hugging and kissing me? Why haven't you been celebrating my love for you? Now, Imagine this. Imagine Simon, who's religious. He must, he must be thinking, Jesus, you've lost it. You've totally lost the plot here. Um, he must have been thinking, Jesus, do you know who this woman is? Um, do you know what you're saying? This disgraceful woman, and, and you're ex 
asking me to act the same way that she is acting towards you. Um, and, and into that, in this text, Jesus is saying, yes, that's exactly how I want you to respond. So, I mean, I want you to lay it all down. I want you to bring what's important in your life, what you love the very most, and lay it down and give your heart to me. And that's what Jesus is teaching Simon, and it's what he's teaching us. Because I think it's what real transformational faith looks like, you know, um, for uh, our faith uh, to truly transform our hearts. Um, we need to have what Martin Lloyd-Jones calls the expulsive power of a new affection. We need to um, make Jesus our most powerful affection, the thing that we love more than anything else. Uh, and that'll put everything else in its rightful place. Mm. Uh, when we love Jesus more than anything else, uh, then everything else will just fall into its order. And that's, that's what he's getting at with Simon. You know, but Simon doesn't have that kind of faith. Because Simon's got, you know, I believe in God, I kind of believe in Jesus and, you know, I'm starting to get the hang of this and I'm, I'm turning up to church and, and that's what the kind of faith Simon's got. And, you know, I can remember a time when my faith was a bit like that actually mm. uh, and, and, and I'm sure that there's people watching this who, who are probably getting that too. You know, I, I don't feel like I want to fall at Jesus' feet and worship him and, and love him and, and just show my great affection for him. Um, and, and what I want to say is um, I, think there, I, I think there's a clear way that Jesus teaches us here uh, to, to have that kind of faith, that kind of faith that transforms our hearts. And I think it's the kind of faith that the world needs, right? I think it's, it's the kind of faith that the world needs. And the way Jesus teaches Simon is by telling him a parable. Now, Jesus does this often, right? He, he tells these little stories that um, teach us something really powerful. And, and this is very powerful. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, uh, Simon, let me tell you something. Um, verse 41, uh, two people owed money to a certain money lender. One owed him 500 denarii, the other 50. Neither of them had the money to pay him back. So he forgave the debts of both. Now, Simon, which one of them will love him more? Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Simon said. Now, here's what Jesus is saying. First of all, Jesus doesn't say that the debt just disappears into thin air. What Jesus says is the debt still is paid. But Simon, it's not paid by you. Actually, it's paid by me, mm. Simon. I'm the one that's going to pay your debt. Now, we look at this and we go, well, of course this woman would fall at Jesus' feet. And she was a prostitute. Her life was so sinful. You can imagine Simon going, of course, I can understand. Her debt was so big. What Jesus is saying here is, Simon, you think your debt is small. Mm. You think what it cost for me to forgive your debt is small, that it's different to this woman. But Simon, I say, it's the same cost. Mm. It's the same cost to save you as it is to save this woman. It's mm. going to cost me my life to mm. save you, Simon, mm. you know, in the same way. And that's what this woman, is, that's what she knows. Mm. She sees the enormity of the debt that's been forgiven. And that's why she's got this transformative love for Jesus. Now, I think one of the interesting things here that we need to make sure we pick up on is that Jesus isn't saying um, that our debts are different. He's merely pointing to the fact that the measure with which we see our debt, mm. you know, uh, he who uh, thinks his debt is small will love little. He who thinks the debt is huge will love much. So Jesus isn't saying... Um, Whoever's sinned more, their debt will be forgiven much bigger and therefore they love more. No, that's not what he's saying. What he's saying is if you realise how big the debt is, if you realise how great the cost is that I paid to save you, you will go and love radically. Mm -hmm. You will go and love much. You will go and forgive much. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a great message. Uh, and I think it's a great message for us to hear because um, too often we think that... Um, uh, we haven't sinned much. My debt is small. 
uh, and Jesus is saying here, <laughs> everyone's debt is big and it's going to cost me a great deal uh, and, and I want you to know that. I want you to know grace. Mm. And, and that's the main point he's getting at here. Mm. What amazing love Jesus shows for all of us as he does yep. um, lay down his life for us. I think yep. uh, it would be great for us to pray together now. Uh, Jamie, do you want to start and then I'll lead us in? Sounds great. Uh, gracious God, thank you so much for your word here. I thank you for this amazing story of a woman who sees the enormity of what you've done in her life. Our Lord, and I thank you for the enormity of what you've done in my life. I thank you for the amazing grace, the amazing blessings that you've just poured out on me. Our Lord, and I say, thank you. Our Lord, I pray uh, that you would pour out your grace uh, on the people of Tasmania right now. I pray that they would see the enormity of what you're doing in their lives. Our Lord, and I pray that those people who might be at home watching this and thinking, oh, Jesus, is this something going on? I, what do I do? I pray that they would respond with faith. I pray, Lord, that they would respond by reaching out and saying, I love Jesus. I follow Jesus. So, Lord, uh, would you come? Would you come and work in the lives of many in Tasmania? In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Join with me as I pray for our community and for our world. Yeah. Uh, Lord, we thank you just so much for the fact that you are in charge, that you are with us, uh, that we have hope through Jesus. We are so thankful and we're thankful for your word, which is living, which speaks to us even now. Yeah. Uh, we pray that you would help us to fix our hearts and our minds on you. Uh, Lord, would you be our greatest treasure? Mm. Would we see how much you've forgiven us and would that make us so thankful just for the life that you've given us, even at this time? And uh, Lord, we want to say that we are so sorry. Lord, we're sorry for the ways that this week we have not loved you with our whole hearts. We haven't seen what you've done for us, Lord. We're sorry for the ways that we uh, haven't loved others as we, sh as we should have. We want to lay these things down before you and acknowledge that uh, we can't carry them by ourselves. We can't carry that guilt by ourselves. Mm. And we hand that to you, Jesus, and ask you uh, to uh, continue to make us new. Lord, thank you that you prom promise uh, to give us new hearts. Thank you that you forgive us of our sins uh, through Jesus. And Lord, we do ask that you would help us to walk in new life more and more. Uh, we pray, Lord Jesus, for our world that is, so, that is so hurt at the moment. God, we pray particularly uh, for our country. We pray for the leaders of our country and the leaders of this state. Lord, would you give them strength and wisdom to lead wisely at this time. Uh, God, I pray uh, for the people in our community who are hurting, who are sick, who are lonely. I pray that you would be their protection. Lord, would you be granting, uh, particularly people in our community, peace at this time. We pray that you would help us as the church uh, to know how to love our neighbours to know how to support people, even in this time of separation. Lord, would we uh, stand as the church, as a body, united, uh, even in these different times. Mm. And we pray most of all that you would be glorified. Mm. Uh, so please keep us, Jesus. Would you hear us? Would you help us? And would you keep us? Mm. We pray all of these things in the name of your powerful son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. So uh, we wanted to invite you to join us on Wednesday for yep. Disciples in the Shed yep. dish, as Jamie likes to say. Uh, that is Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. Please join us. And we invite you to join us again next Sunday for our 10 a.m. service and for our 3 p.m. service. Uh, have a good week. Uh, before we go, though, let's sing our final song.
just wanted to quickly pray for the money that's been given towards the work of the church this week. We really appreciate your continued support. Uh, Lord God, thank you that you do give us all things and we ask that you would help uh, us to steward the money that's been given towards the work of the church well this week. Would you use it to support people uh, and for your glory? We ask this in your name. Amen. Amen. Uh, So this week, would you uh, go in peace to love and serve the Lord? Amen. Amen.